does a filmmaker need to know about cinematography these days? I mean, oh, good question. In general, or these days, or both? These days, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that DSLRs are just so easy to operate, yeah. Should someone, let's suppose someone wants to be a writer director, should yeah. they know what it feels like to have a camera in their hand? Oh, absolutely. I think I think that having a uh, Having a command of cinematography is a, is probably one of the most important things for 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 a director. Doesn't matter whether you're a studio director or a independent director. I think understanding cinematography, because as pretentious as this sounds, I I, almost, I hate this, but the camera is the brush, right? So imagine you know not feeling comfortable being a painter and not feeling comfortable holding that brush. You're not going to express yourself as clearly. So I think there's also an intimidation because, you know, I, I was this way. I was never a techno, you know, I was never a technocrat. You always hear about like someone like Brian De Palma being somebody who would like take apart a radio as a child to figure out every every diode or whatever you call it. You know, I never had that um, interest. I never was a technical. I never fetishized the technical, but I didn't want to understand how to best communicate the images that were in my head on film and to do that you have to understand the camera. More importantly, uh, probably the most important thing is understanding lenses and understanding that, you know, a lens, uh, a close-up on a wide-angle lens and a close-up on a long lens and a close-up on a quote-unquote normal lens or have, you know, three totally different emotional qualities and it starts by looking at different filmmakers and trying to determine, and you don't have to do it yourself. We talked about this earlier. You can also read about, you know, what technical choices they've made in American Cinematographer magazine or in, in listening to directors' commentaries. But just knowing the, what's the quality of a wide-angle lens, and if you watch a film by the Coen Brothers, or Orson Welles, or John Frankenheimer, or Roman Polanski, we're start, you start to understand that not only is the field of view slightly wider than other filmmakers, but there's a drama to, to the way the lines and the ceilings are, are stretching across. And there's a, there's a difference between the way those films look and, say, a film by Michael Bay, which may, even though he uses wide lenses, will end up using a 500 millimeter lens or a lot of long lenses, and then where the background is, is blown out and the depth of field is very narrow. And it's important to distinguish that and not just think about shot size, but what is the focal length of that particular close-up? And what does it feel like to you? And well, the way to do that with a DSLR is to experiment. And most people have a zoom lens. And to set the lens at a focal point, like set the lens at its widest, and then start doing different types of shots with only that lens. Don't zoom in to get closer, but step forward and see what that looks like. And take a lot of different angles and pictures with that particular lens. Move it to the middle of your zoom, which probably is somewhere in the 50s, you know, somewhere in the middle, and do the same thing. And do the same thing with the longest part of your lens. If you want to do a close-up on a, a 200 millimeter, if that's the end of your zoom, then you'll have to get back a little farther and look at those, and then put them together and say, you know what? For a scary moment, maybe the wide-angle lens. For a moment where this person is sad and isolated and alienated, maybe the long lens where I want to you know, make the background, make them detach from the background. I mean, you can make all, there is no set vocabulary that says a wide angle equals sadness or a long lens equals anxiety or any of those things, but it's important for a filmmaker to, I think, to create their own little vocabulary and say, or just to say, I like the look of this. I like the look of this lens. And that's why I think so many filmmakers, Kubrick is another one, you know, where there are these dynamics to the visuals because they're aware of, of, of the lens that is best suited for that particular moment. So that's a long answer to starting with just understanding focal length, you know, is a huge thing. And then there's so many other aspects of cinematography, which is, you know, when does a static shot, when is a static shot more effective than a moving shot? Um, camera height, you know, should everything be right here or is it better to look at the moment from here or from up here? Um, and then something as little, I'm joking, but then there's lighting, which is the whole other thing, which is all. But I think it should all be, I think the thing to think about is think about it in terms of how to best express the emotions of the scene 
it's not just about recording the moment, it's how do you underscore the moment with this particular tool that you have. And I know as a young filmmaker, and this is a long way around, as a young filmmaker I was intimidated by the camera. It's like, a DSLR is not so intimidating, but it still can be. Certainly, you know, when I was fooling around with my first bigger 16 millimeter cameras and then 35 millimeter cameras, you're like, you're looking at this like, it's this big, you know, it's like a rocket ship that you test too many dials on it and what does it do? But really, it's still just a recording device with a piece of glass on it. And the more you handle this thing, particularly with the DSLR, the more you go out and just hold that thing, the more you physically shoot, the more later as a director you're going to be able to direct your cinematographer to put the camera here on this particular lens and move it from here to here. And, that I, and you start to call lenses. I want a 28 millimeter lens here. And you can say that with authority. Every, every real strong director is going to be able to not only say what the shot is, but where the camera should go and on what lens. If you do that, you're only going to be able to do that if you've done it yourself. Because then you know what you're talking about. Otherwise you're just pretending. And I was always afraid of being one of those directors that just, I used to see these directors when I was a, like a freshman in film school. I would see these upperclassmen who were like posing. They were just interested in like, you know, looking like a director and saying action and you know, all this shit. And I was like, yeah, but that dude doesn't really know what he's talking about. And it seems like the crew is making the movie and this guy's just, you know, like sitting up on his high horse like he's in charge, but he's not, he's not taking the image in his head and putting that down with authority. So in order to do that, you have to become familiar with the camera. You don't have to be a master, you just have to be not afraid of it. And you have to be able to tell the difference in things like focal length for you. I like it, I like it on the long lens, so let's shoot this movie on a long lens. Or I like, I like the wide lens because I like, I like the dynamics that that gives, I like the energy that that gives. I like the distortion. Um, the more you handle it, the more comfortable you become. Then you can direct with, with confidence. How about playing with the settings, the ISO, the f-stop, like, like how oh, yeah. can, because sometimes you get in a moment you think, oh, this is going to be great, and then when the light changes, and then you're under a pressure situation, sure. and if you're not familiar yeah. with the camera, you can just totally oh, throw definitely. yourself off. I mean, off. I, I think that's, yeah, I think that, that, that's, yes, those sort of fundamental things. And, and, it's, and, and fundamental things are important, like knowing how to, you know, put the image in focus should not be, you know, <laughs> uh, undervalued. And certainly understanding what an aperture is and how to open the aperture to allow more light or how to, in combination with the shutter speed, you know, that if you're starting to run out of light, not only will you have to open up the lens, but you might have to lower the shutter speed because you have to allow more light in to, to just get an image. All those, like, those, those sort of fundamentals of photography which again are not that many. I mean, there's there's really just like you said. There's 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 the ISO, there's the shutter speed, there's the aperture, and there's the focus ring, and that's basically that's it. You know, that's 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 like when you know when you go into a mixing room. It's so funny. I used to when I used to start mixing movies, and you go into these mixing rooms, which are very similar to um, a music mixing room where you've got a big board and you've got ten thousand faders. You know, they seem to go on for infinity, and there's all these knobs. And I would look at the mixers and go, like, geez, how do you, what, are, what does every one of these things do? And they're like, well, actually, it's all we really need to do, all we really control are like these three and these three, and everything else is like, and so a camera is like that. You may look at it like it's got all these bells and whistles, but they're only, you know, half a dozen or even less particular features that really control the image. So I think most, most, young filmmakers are getting to that place earlier because they now possess a camera that is closer to a professional or is a professional camera so yes but I, I, I think the biggest you know mistake is to defer that that's all important tool to somebody else like oh, I don't need to bother with that camera I will express you know the mood that I have and then this cinematographer will magically interpret it and the image will come out exactly as I to me, that's just a long way around. You might as well just be able to say, here, you know, here's the composition at this height on this lens. And then, then the cinematographer who arguably knows more about all these things or is able to bring that much more visually to the table will then build upon something and make it even better. But you don't want to rely upon a cinematographer to invent your image because then what are you doing? Then you're really only directing the actors. And if you're going to do that, then you might as well direct theater. <laughs>